So after we have specified the material properties for our model, the next step would be to define the physics. So we want to define the physics for our current electrical thermal problem. So let's start off with configuring the physics for the electric currents interface. Under the current conservation one node, we're going to now administer two-way coupling for dual heating. This is where we are going to implement a temperature dependent electrical conductivity. I could have done this already when I specified the materials for the model by writing an expression for the value of this property in the material contents table. However, here I'm going to implement it within the physics interfaces. So we would change our selection for the electrical conductivity to a linearized resistivity. So here we can see the equation used to compute the electrical conductivity. And you'll see that we require three properties for this. We require the reference resistivity, the reference temperature, and the resistivity temperature coefficient. And if we go back into our material polysilicon, we can see that these are now the three properties required to be entered. So we could enter them in here, but we can also enter them right within the current conservation one node by selecting user defined and manually entering the settings. So we enter the respective values. And there we have implemented a temperature dependent electrical conductivity. We also could have chosen a user defined electrical conductivity and manually entered a value or expression, including all of these respective properties. So anywhere within Compsol Multiphysics, you can type a number, you can type an equation and the equations representative of any physical conditions and constraints within Comsol Multiphysics can always be located in the respective nodes settings window. So there's no black box in Comsol Multiphysics. You as the user can always know what Comsol Multiphysics is doing and how it's doing it. So now we want to apply a ground boundary condition to the bottom of the anchor of the long hot arm. So right on this boundary right here. So we would go in the physics tab and under boundaries, we would select ground. And we're also going to implement a electric potential boundary condition for the applied voltage to our actuator. And this is the same no matter what application you are modeling. Let's say, for example, you were simulating a plasma application and wanted to add a surface reaction boundary condition. You would go in the physics tab under the boundaries button and select and add that. If you were in a radio frequency application and wanted to add a port boundary condition, this would be done in the same exact way. So with that, let's add and applied voltage to the bottom of the anchor of the short hot arm and apply a voltage of five volts. You'll notice that I indicated the unit through square brackets and in console multiphysics, you can input different units and the software will automatically convert it to the units required. I could have entered 5,000 millivolts and it would have computed the equivalent voltage value. So you never have to worry about any conversions between the units you have and what the default units are in the settings window. With that, we've completely configured the electric currents interface and we can move on to the heat transfer in solids interface. Now, we're going to want to apply a heat flux across the boundaries of the actuator and surrounding substrate surfaces. So we're going to add a heat flux boundary condition, go under boundaries, and select heat flux. We're going to apply it to all the boundaries of the actuator except for the top surface. We have a different heat transfer coefficient for this. Select inward heat flux and then we apply our value for the heat transfer coefficient, which would be 20,000 watts per meter squared Kelvin.
And again, we don't have to worry about converting to the units required. For example, if we had a different temperature unit of degrees Celsius, it would automatically do the conversion to the respective unit within the settings window. We're going to want to apply a heat flux across the top surface of the actuator. So we add another heat flux boundary condition and apply it to just the top surface. You'll notice that all of the geometric entity levels are numbered in your model. Every object, domain, boundary, edge and point. So there are no mistakes if you're collaborating with colleagues and you want them to look at a certain part of your model's geometry. And this is also always where you can create a named selection of any of the selected geometry in your model. We would select inward heat flux, Again, enter our heat transfer coefficient value of 400 watts per meter squared Kelvin. We're also going to want to specify the temperature of the boundaries in contact with the substrate. So under boundaries, we would select temperature, and then we want to apply it to the bottom boundaries of each anchor, as well as each of the three dimples. As we have been implementing the physical conditions of our model, Comsol Multiphysics is mathematically formulating our multiphysics couplings. The electromagnetic heat source multiphysics node takes the resistive heating, Q, from the electric current interface node and passes it to the heat transfer and solids interface node. We define the resistive heating through its current density, J, and electric field strength, E. The current density is obtained from the current conservation one node and is the product of the electrical conductivity, sigma, and electric field strength, since there is no external current density in our model. We used a linear approximation for the resistivity of our material to define its electrical conductivity. The electric field strength is the gradient of the electric potential, which was defined when we applied the electric potential and ground boundary conditions. So this is generally one of the ways we approach multiphysics couplings for a model. We define the physics and then use the multiphysics interface to direct which interfaces information is being pulled from or passed into. As the electric current passing through the actuator is resisted, heat is released. This is the electromagnetic conversion of electrical energy to thermal energy. The boundary electromagnetic heat source maps these electromagnetic surface losses as a heat source on all the boundaries for the heat transfer part of our model. As the actuator is experiencing this resistive heating, the temperature of the actuator changes. This temperature variation is needed in order to evaluate the electrical conductivity of our material in the electric current interface. Thus, the temperature multiphysics coupling takes the temperature from the heat transfer and solids interface and passes it to the electric currents interface.